Joan of Arc, a simple farm girl who heeded the calls of her lord and fought for her country all the way until the very end. Her loyalty, however, is exactly what brought about her demise. Sold to the English by her own people, Joan was tried on false accounts of witchcraft and sentenced to be sauteed alive on a stake. Waifu shish kebab. Now Joan wasn't too concerned about this. She died with no regrets. But the evil version of Jill DeRay couldn't let this underhandedness slide. In her past, Joan was too pure of a person to actually turn evil. So Jill decided to do something a little different. From the ground up, Jill created his own version of Joan based on the way that he thought that she should have handled the situation. Joan Alter, a replica of Joan placed in the ruler class and sent back into the Hundred Years War to seek revenge on the same people that betrayed her. Her first task involved confronting the Bishop Pierre Calkin, the same man that set flames to the real Joan of Arc when she was still alive. Hey, remember me? No, it can't be. Oh. I'll, I'll do whatever you want, just don't hurt me. We eating pork chops tonight, fat boy. <laughs> no! Ah, I feel better already, but it's not enough. Continuing to invoke the power of the Singularity's Grail, Jalter summons seven more fake servants to her side most of which being figures that also ended their lives on a controversial note. This includes Sir Lancelot, Saint Martha, Charles Sanson, Carmilla, Vlad III, Atalanta, and Dayon. She furthers their strength by giving them a berserker-like modification to increase their power, which also threw away their sanity as well. In addition to these perks, Jalter was created with an affinity to dragons, boasting a numerous amount of wyverns and the great dragon Fafner that was once defeated by the servant Siegfried. Their main goal? Wreak havoc over all of France and run over anybody who tries to get in their way. A goal that was largely successful considering the fact that they were able to get rid of King Charles VII. The only thing that she didn't count on was Claudia showing up in the midst of her plans and wiping out half of her servants. As we continue to defeat her servants one by one, Jalter starts to get afraid that her scheme might be ruined, resorting to Fafner as one of her last trump cards in hopes that he would get us out the way. Luckily for us, we had Siegfried on our side, and just like in his lore, he used the power of his sword Balmung to put this creature back in his place. Jalta retreats back to the castle where she was summoned, and she comes together with Jill to think of a better solution to stop us. Jill goes out on a limb and says, maybe they should summon King Arthur. Oh God, it's like Fate Zero all over again. In response, Jalta tells him that she highly doubts an English knight would come to fight at her side, but she's going to try it out anyway and see if today is her lucky day. Unfortunately for her, it's not. Our team was able to make it to the castle right before they completed the summoning and we finished off Jill and Jalta once and for all. Jalta disappears and we retrieve the Singularity's Holy Grail from what was left of her remains. But this is only the beginning. Through the Da Vinci event, Jalta received a one-time opportunity to revive herself by manipulating the real Joan's wish to never become an altar. In other words, she basically was able to revive herself just because she can. Really pays off to be popular, doesn't it? She continues to battle against Claudia, stating that she won't be satisfied until she gets her revenge in full. She wants to surpass her original self 
In the grand scheme of things, Jill and Jalter deny God, but they still believe that their acts of malice are justified and this burning hatred that she has earned her a spot in the Avenger class. Da Vinci tells Jalter that she's really aiming too low with her vengeance and that she should use all of that anger on our side and become an anti-hero. Jalter thinks about it and she eventually admits that she is the biggest Sundere in all of Grand Order and that she has an inferiority complex from being the fake version of Joan. And after a long wait, she tells us, you know what? That doesn't sound like such a bad idea. And just like that, we have Jalter. Well, not me, of course, because she refuses to come. Anywho, following these events, Jalter is summoned into the Shinjuku Singularity alongside Arturia Alter. Turns out that Jalter finally got her wish to work with King Arthur. Unfortunately, her premonitions from the first Singularity were correct. They don't like each other at all, as a matter of fact. Must be the edge. Jalter has took it upon herself to create her own territory and anybody that comes in it is getting fried. You stay on your side, I'll stay on mine, or I'll kill you. Very simple guidelines here. Eventually, Jalter found herself clashing with the fate Moriarty and taking a fatal wound because of it. At this point, she meets up with Ritsuka, who has partnered with Salter, forcing them to work side by side in the end. The past encounter that she had with the fate Moriarty left Jalter unable to trust the real one, despite Ritsuka telling her that he's good people. Even though he turned out not to be trusted anyway, but you get the picture. They continue the singularity facing the machinations of the fate Moriarty, such as Hessian Lobo from the Phantom Alliance. It was here that Jalter was able to trap Lobo inside of her noble phantasm, giving us a fair shot at a 1v1, if you can even call this fair. Later on down the road, we infiltrate a party to retrieve more information about another Alliance member, Yan Ching. The thing here is that in order to attend this party, we all had to sneak in wearing a dress, including the main character. So what should have been us making advances on our enemy turned into Jalter and Salter making fun of Ritsuka for wearing a dress, taking non-consensual pictures of this man and threatening to post it where everybody could see. Thanks guys, I don't know what I would do without you. Catching up to Hessian Lobo, we realize that he's grown even more powerful from fusing with a phantom spirit. Jalter decides to use her phantasm to hold him off once again. These flames, however, come from the inside of her body, which in turn means that using this move would be a near suicide attempt in order to save the squad. Obstinate as she may be, Jalter decides to go through with it anyway. Her near-death experience tells us that she still harbors a lot of angst towards the fact that she's the fake version of Joan. How Lobo was also betrayed by the same people that was supposed to have his back in his lore, and that the world is a dark place no matter how you try to cut it. Even if you claim to be a quote-unquote good person, you're obviously just ignoring the truth. Dalta was able to recover by taking Sherlock's advice and taking refuge in the sewer. After her recovery, she was able to help Ritsuka save Shinjuku from Moriarty and the demon god Ball. And with the demon god pillar out of the picture, Jalter should be disappearing along with everybody else. But instead, she threatens Ritsuka to give her the same quality time that he gave Salter when they snuck into that party. Now, dance and like it or die. The choice is yours. My been in the business smoking moon. Hey, rock. Hey. Pocket full of motherfucking blue. Blue. Guap. Guap. Half an ounce in my Gucci tube. Socks. Socks. For the summertime, got a new what? drop. Stop. 
Trapper slash rapper slash bad bitch. Now you come here, baby.